the update on Tyree Wilson um, after coming out of the game on Sunday? Yeah, still not looking good. We'll know probably later on this week, but not looking good. I know you guys placed Malcolm Clemson on IR last week, um, but you didn't have you know, the details on his status. Um, do you have any more additional information on him? Could he potentially come back this season? Coons, uh, as of right now, he's still out. AP, as you watched the film and were able to analyze your offense, I know you're not going to tell us your state secrets, not asking for that, but were you able to identify the key areas that you felt that caused the struggle and how to correct it? Yeah, I, th I thought, you know, interior, O-line, short yardage, football, um, missed opportunities. You know, we crossed that 50 several times and didn't put any points on the board, but maybe, excuse me, one, two times. Uh, the other ones just didn't go our way, either, you know, penalties, um, sacks, turnover, just, just wasn't good enough. And, you know, I think when our offense looks at it, you know, it's, you know, you always want to give credit to the other team, granted. But there are some self-inflicted wounds there that we obviously we can fix and we can detail and fine-tune. We talked about that and went in depth. And then obviously, you know, Raiders can't beat the Raiders when it comes down just to simple things, just doing those things better. You talk about self-inflicted wounds. When you watch back the tape, take away those two turnovers from Gardner. How different do you think the game would be and how much of an emphasis is that, you know, going forward? Yeah, I think you just have to look at the – Two minutes drill right before the first half. You know, seven three ball game. We're close. We're right there in field position, and we're thinking about doubling up, right? Scoring right before the end of half. Scoring again, we get the ball. You know, after halftime, a little momentum swift uh, change there. But um, look, not going to ever go back and, and 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 reflect on that. It is what it is. We had opportunity still in that game to have a chance to win, and I thought Gardner for the most part, you know, handled the operations, the tempo. Uh, what we wanted to accomplish, uh, but again, you got to establish a running game. You can't just sit there and just drop back and just you know let these guys tee off on our quarterback. We have to do a better job of establishing a running game. You talked about the difficulties of defending a quarterback like Lamar Jackson. Um, how much discipline does that take, uh, especially on the defensive line when you're rushing, not to over rush and, and yeah. just be disciplined in that regard? Yeah, it's going to take all 11 guys to do their job. You hear this all the time, but it's true. If you see our guys running up the field, running past the quarterback, you know, just pack your bags. It's going to be a long day for the Raiders. Uh, we got to do a jo good job. You know, when I played, we played against Vic. You know, we called it cage rush, kind of keeping them in. You see Lamar, he has the ability to slither his way out of it, but it's very difficult. Think about the second-level defenders and your DBs, right? They're 12 to 14 yards deep. All of a sudden, he steps up in the A and B gap. What do you do? You stay back in coverage or do you go attack the quarterback? So really critical up front that we are detailed and do our job and our assignment and what's actually in, the, in the game plan. More importantly, linebackers having vision, filling the routes around them. And our secondary, everybody's eyes got to be on eight, but also filling the routes around us. Alexander Madison was uh, one, one of the bright spots offensively. I know you've already praised him and you already knew he was going to be a part of your offense, but do you expect him to have a bigger role going forward? Yeah, I think anybody can help us win a bigger role. But, you know, to be honest, I thought Zamir had some good stuff there, right? We had a penalty, we had a fumble, and we, he backed that up right after the fumble. Another eight-yard run. Those are the kind of runs we expect, 16, 12-yard runs, eight-yard runs to get going. Alex, uh, I thought, did an outstanding job. More important, I know he had a great uh, catch and, and hurdle, but then just in pass pro, very physical. You know, he got the tough yard. So uh, I've said it before, whoever can help us win the hot hand, we'll roll with that. I know it's been kind of a start, stop, start, stop for uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, but um, if he's able to get on the practice field this week, is there a chance that he could be out there on Sunday? Uh, he could be active. I don't know, you know, I mean, how many practices we had. But today he'll be out there at practice. So that's, that's step one. So I know you talked a lot in the preseason about you know, the run defense needing to improve, and I know it was good in the first half against the Chargers, but you had some breakdowns in the second half. Um, moving forward, especially against a team like the Ravens, you mentioned Lamar Jackson, but also Derrick Henry. How important is that to get corrected this week? Yeah, I mean, um, what is it, 37 plus, 35 plus runs they had in the game, and four of them we fit up wrong. No, I mean, it's do your job each and every play, right? If you're a second level linebacker, fit the gap accordingly. If you're a D lineman, you know, no jumping around playing peekaboo. Um, it's critical. And then I think our team really understood that because, you know, late in the game, you're down, guys are trying to make plays. You can't do that. You got to keep staying and play, you know, team defense. Those are the good teams that play in the month of January, February, and that's what we're striving to do. You mentioned the run game and how important that is to get going, but with that comes the play action as well. How important is it going to be to take a couple shots to try to loosen things up a little? Yeah, you can't have play action with a run game. That's what I'm going to go back to. Like, you know, we got to establish the run. We got to get Zamir running, get going. Uh, we got to get Alex going. We got to get our whole line going, right? The juice and the flow stars are those big boys. And I always say, when those guys are ripping and rolling and coming off the rock and finishing down the field, we're a good football team. And that obviously will open up our passing game, our play action, our keepers, our boots, everything else of that nature. Were there wasn't a lot of uh, 12 personnel last week. Was that because of matchups or because Say one more time. there wasn't a lot of 12 personnel last week? I think it's 15 or 60 plays, 12 personnel. And so we talk about 
all preseason there, him and since Bowers was drafted. Is that a matchup thing, or what was the reason for not using 12 uh, personnel? Just the pride of the game, the way to the flow of the game, but it was some 12 and some 13 in there as well. So, I mean, listen, we're, we're fortunate we got some good skilled players across the board. Sometimes the way the game go, you don't get enough snaps at a certain personnel group and you want. When you were talking about Lamar, you mentioned going against Vic as a player. Uh, how much does that experience for you as a player yeah. help carry over as a coach to prep preparing for a guy like this? Huge. And then the division I played in, you know, went up against Donovan McNabb each and every year, and that was always difficult. And Vic ends up with the Eagles towards the end of my career. So um, we talked about that in depth in the defensive staff room. I've had my conversation with the players. Um, the good part about it, some of these guys have went up against a player like this just a few years ago when the Raiders played the Ravens in 2021, 20, I believe. Um, the key thing, like I said, man, it's just, it's just being disciplined. We're talking about one of the best football players in the National Football League. It's not going to take one guy. It's going to take all 11. It's going to take 60 minutes of doing it. I mean, we might do it right just like the other day, the entire game. And in the last two minutes, if we blow it, we blow it, right? And nobody's going to talk about the other 58 minutes. On top of Lamar Jackson, you also have Derrick Henry to contend with. How are you kind of preparing the team for that? Yeah, big boy football. Strap it up. Like I said, hard hat mentality. Grab a cup of Advil from Chris in the, the training room. Uh, it's going to hurt. I don't know one established the run. When you look at a linebacker like Will Klein Smith, you know, what do you see on tape that you really like about him? Impressive. Love watching him play. Smart, intelligent, leader, tone setter. Um, I mean, you can see the difference. When he shipped over from when they got when they made the trade from Chicago to Baltimore, it was like, wow, okay. Like now he's on front street. Now everybody can see who's probably the the best football player in football, and especially one of the linebackers. But I just love his, you know, intensity. I love how he tackles. I love how he brings each and every play. Um, you, you can truly appreciate the linebacker play when you watch him. You mentioned Tyree, you know, you're monitoring his status this week. You guys signed Chase on to the, mm -hmm. the practice squad yesterday. What did you guys see in him to let this Yeah, play? I mean, there's a bunch of talent there. Um, I think there's still some unta untapped uh, talent there as well. He's 25 years old. And, again, listen, we're battling with injuries at that position. Here's a guy that can help us. He's played a lot of football. He's experienced, and he has a little, he has a little juice in his legs that we need right now. You think what about consistency uh, in the preseason? And the offense just came out pretty disjointed, fits and starts to the first game. I'm wondering, <clears throat> are you going to take a different approach toward the first game of the year where was that a result of just the timing, the first game kind of thing? Or did you see other issues going on in terms of the lack of consistency? Uh, like I said, I think it was a lot of self-inflicted stuff. I mean, to be honest, we only had one penalty on offense, and it, it hurt us. It was in the critical play where we got to the ball to the – 35-yard line, and then there was this other ones where, you know, we get the ball in a plus 45 and we take back-to-back -back sacks, you know, or we, we miss a read or we, we have a turnover. So a lot of self-inflicted stuff. The timing can pick up. We can pick up our operation, our speed, obviously. Uh, but I will say this. I think we see it across the National Football League. A lot of teams in week one didn't look like they'll probably look the rest of the season. That's what we're banking on. What were your impressions of the Brock's first game? Impressive. Impressive. I thought, you know, Butterflies is there. Young rookie, you know, I don't care how much football you've played in SEC or anything like that. You out there in your first game, it, it's real. It's different. And um, you can just tell how he was. Once he got that first catch, he kind of came on the sideline, shook his mask right in front of us. Okay, then made a big play down the, down the field later on. But I just think there's more, so much more there, not just with Brock, but even with Big Mike. You know, I thought they made some great catches. And what I love about both of them, really physical in the run game. You know, they had some tough matchups going against Bosa and Mack and the things we were asking them to do, and they didn't shy away. Maybe there's an adage that most teams make their most improvement between game one and two. Has that been something you've noticed over your career mm -hmm. and something that you're looking for, obviously, forward to this week? Yeah, because it's a wake-up call, right? Obviously, when you lose a game, everybody's self-reflection, one-on-one, right? We're in school right now. We're trying to figure out, like, what happened? You go back and look at your last Monday, Tuesday throughout the week. How can you get better? And I think as players, you do the same thing, you know. You might think you're ready. You might thought you was prepared for something, but was you really? But I think for all of us as a staff, as we get to know each other, and again, year one, putting this whole bad boy together, quarterback, you know, uh, offensive coordinator, those guys gelling together. I mean, no excuses, but, you know, just three weeks ago we named Minshew the starter. So there, there's still a lot of growth, man, there for us. We're not a finished product. We want to play our best football in December, but we better get off to a faster start than we need to in week two. This franchise is 1-7 in its last eight games on the East Coast. Um, I guess what is your philosophy? What have you learned over your career that might, might help maybe with this trip? I know you were an East Coast guy as a player. Yeah. It's a little different for you, but what, what can you take from that? Yeah, I mean, we try to speed up our clock like we're doing today. You know, we woke up earlier, start our day at 6 o'clock in the morning, try to be on the same time as the, the East Coast. So when we're out to practice, it'll be around 11, and we'll shorten that down to about 10.30 on Friday. Just try to speed up our clock, get guys up, so when we get over there and 
Saturday at 4, 8, 4 p.m., you know, we kind of get on that East Coast uh, clock. But at the end of the day, man, it's just getting off to a fast start. I think for any team that travels on the road, I don't care if we just went one state over like we did last week to California, can't turn the ball over. Got to play good red zone defense, and you got to be good on third down. So those things travel, and then obviously defense does travel, and we're banking on that as well. That's good. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.